Now, I get messages every week from people saying to me, Jody, how the hell is your beard so on point? And let me tell you, as above, so below. I'm a goddamn walking masterpiece. And as much as I'd love to take all the credit, it all goes to Manscaped, baby. They're the kings of male grooming. And the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra by Manscaped is every man's cheat code to look good, feel good, and make 2024 your sharpest year yet. It's more than just a trimmer. It's equipped with two skin-safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. Lads, this'll have your ball sack looking like a fucking mirror. And that's a good thing because women love mirrors. She can do our makeup in it. And did I mention it's waterproof? You can trim in the shower if you want. This basically makes even the dumbest men able to accomplish the greatest of things. And if you want to fully kit yourself out for 2024, then look no further than the Performance Package 5.0. You get the trusted lawnmower, Manscaped ear and nose hair trimmer, and essential aftercare products with the Crop Soother and Crop Preserver, deodorant for your balls. Think that that isn't necessary? You probably stink. You also get the Boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 toiletry bag, which is actually great if you're traveling it's it's literally perfect i use it all the time so let's face it new year's resolutions they come and go but a good looking set of crown jewels is here to stay permanently so to get yours simply click the link in the description below go to manscape.com and use the code pain game that's all block capitals all one word pain game at checkout for 20 percent off and free shipping thanks to them for sponsoring the video but for now enjoy the video Welcome back to the Pain Game YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button, all that good stuff. Because today, John Jones... <clears throat> to clear my throat for this because I never thought would say the day where the big bad John Jones pound for pound or greatest of all time officially has ducked Tom Aspinall embarrassing mate now how do I know he's ducked Tom Aspinall well if you're a world champion your goal is to prove you're the best by fighting the best if you don't want to fight the best it's because you don't believe you can beat the best and therefore you ain't the best pal and you're a fucking duck I know people will get triggered because John Jones is such a great fighter and how can you call say this about John Jones I call out the behaviour for what it is, man. It's not that I don't think he's been a great fighter. Yes, he's been a great fighter. But you fucking fanboys need to take the fucking specs off and watch what the fuck he's saying and doing and remove this Superman complex you've got about him and look at it for what it is. He is bowing down to Tom Aspinall. Never thought a fucking lad from England could make big bad John Jones do this, but here we are. It's that English blood, though, isn't it? It's proper raw, that. Don't want to fuck with us Englishmen. Oh, oh but John Jones would destroy Tom Aspinall. Look at what he did all those light heavyweights. Oh, really? Well, then why won't he take the fucking fight? Let's look at the tweets. Only four recognisable opponents, already the King of England, must be nice. There will be legendary to tales told about you and your infamous call-outs. Bro, that's all we're going to get because you won't take the fucking fight. And a clever kid replies, he's done all he can do and you can't blame him for being frustrated. <laughs> he goes, I mean, it doesn't really work like that. I was champion when I was 23 years old. You can't just show up at 30 pretending you've been chasing me your whole life. I have no clue who 90% of your resume is. Meanwhile, I've been highlighting UFC events my entire career. Well, actually, John, that's exactly how it works. When you win the interim title, you get the next shot at the champion when he's back available. This is the first time in UFC history where that hasn't happened for special treatment for you because you want your fucking legacy fight against someone who's been knocked out in his last fight and has only had one fight in the last fucking four years by the time you actually get round to fighting him. This notion that you have to fight for fucking 10 years before you get a title shot in the UFC is absolute bollocks, by the way. You win the interim title, you get the title shot. Standard. And while we're at it, he's belittling Tom Aspinall, saying he's only had four recognisable names. Why does he deserve a title shot? Let's look back at John Jones's CV before he fought for the title. And I remember this back in the day, so I was following this shit closely. I mean, Stefan Bonner, Jake O'Brien, Matt Hamill, we knew who they were back in the day, but they were not elite they were good ish but you never thought he was losing the fights brandon vera was a good win matt yashenko okay ryan bader good win and then you're on a title shot your cv was not electrifying before you fought for the title pal you bullshitting bastard <laughs> sorry like <laughs> i'm just fucking had enough of this bullshit yeah i mean Beating Sergei Pavlovich is far more impressive than anything john jones did before he fought for the title chon says it's a wild world we live in 
he's triggered. People can be so quick to replace you. I mean, that is literally how sport works. The the young ones come in and overthrow the old ones when they fight each other. And unfortunately, you're very aware of that. So you're trying to do everything you can to stop that from happening by avoiding it. They throw you away. Well, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happens. The young athletes come and overthrow the older ones. Like Serena Williams ain't going to be in a prime forever. And she knows a young tennis player is going to come and overthrow her. That's what happens. The world just doesn't get a change just for you, John. That's the best thing about your stats and being able to see the fruits of your labor. Here's the thing. That's what you do when you're at the end of your career. You look back at your work. When you're the defending champion, you have to defend it. You don't just get to say, well, I don't need to fight you because look at all this other great stuff I've done. This is fucking mental. How the UFC has turned into boxing. Dana White used to be so opposed to this bullshit political game that is played in boxing where you try and protect people from the young hungry lions. And now the UFC is literally getting worse. Fucking sick of this shit. Oh my God. He, this guy he even says, be undeniable. Be absolutely undeniable. Undeniable is when you're defending your title and beating the next contender. That's how you prove you're undeniable. You fucking wally. He's then accusing Tom Aspinall of being the victim because he's responded. Tom is literally just saying, give me the shot. I want to fight you. I'm not discrediting you entirely. I'm just saying, I think I can beat you. That's not playing the victim, you mug. It's offering you out for a fight. Tom rightly says, John, you're letting your ego run wild here, mate. I mean, he literally is. He's just talking about all of his accomplishments instead of getting to the fucking point. Because he just want to get to the point because the point is i don't want to fight you so he wants to dance around it as much as he can tom says your resume is far superior to mine you are known as the best fighter ever and that's exactly why i want to beat you surely you can understand that john says you're being a hypocrite you literally haven't kept my balls out your mouth since you won your imaginary championship i mean it literally is the interim title and it is there for when the main champion is out of action you have an interim champion you then unify them afterwards it's not imaginary in the slightest it's very real it's been made use of by the ufc consistently for the last 20 fucking years both you and serge have zero championships between your name i mean cyril gone didn't have a fucking title and that's who you won the title against he wasn't even the champion if we're talking honestly here even john jones's title is fucking bullshit the real champion the lineal ufc champion is francis and and john jones all the time in the world to get in there with him but instead he needed three fucking years to put weight on what a load of bollocks the bloke after year one of that trainer was 265 and he only come back to the usc when francis was halfway out the door into boxing and the fight was pretty much dead and buried at that point absolute bullshit a man it's funny that you can actually walk around feeling like the world champion same goes pal especially when the actual champion is undefeated oh mate man you've literally fought one fucking heavyweight this is the delusion that john jones operates in he thinks that him beating up guys who were 50 to 60 pounds lighter than tom aspinall makes any blind bit of fucking difference to what he's done in heavyweight you've had one fucking heavyweight fight and your plan is to have one more against an old man who hasn't beaten anyone in the last fucking four fucking years and get the fuck out. That's not a heavyweight champion. And you'll never be remembered as the true heavyweight champion if that's your fucking plan. John says, my steep fight was booked well before yours came along. That interim championship means absolutely nothing in case you haven't noticed it yet. Mate, your steep fight was booked and delayed because you got injured. That's why the interim championship had to be given out. Therefore... Tom Aspinall, while you're on the sidelines, should be fighting Stipe Miocic, and the winner should fight for the undisputed. Then the fucking title around your waist might mean something, because right now that doesn't mean jack shit either. It's only the illusion because you've been a light heavyweight champion that makes people look at you as the rightful heavyweight champion. You haven't done fuck all to warrant that over Tom. Tom had the harder fight. He's got more rights to it. He's got more heavyweight wins than, than you have by a fucking mile, mate. Joke this like. How people get away with spouting so much bollocks. Honestly, I can't be having this like. Good thing the UFC and its long-standing champions are on the same page. The UFC realized that their legacy is entwined with this idea that John Jones is the greatest of all time. And if Aspinall comes in and beats the living shit out of the supposed GOAT, it destroys one of the few legends they've got left. And that's why they're protecting him and feeding him old man Stipe. You seen a clip of him walking out of an arena the other day. 
The bloke looks like he needs a new hip, man. Me fucking granddad could get up the stairs quicker than him. Sorry, it's just fucking true. That That is all true. John then says, what I refuse to do is be like a lot of other fighters who stuck around too long. That won't happen. Yada, yada, yada. I want Stipe for my resume. Outside of that, I need nothing else from the sport. Well, there it is then. It ain't about the best fighting the best, which is what a world title is always supposed to be about. It's about John saying, I've got an easy win in Stipe there. And then that gives me somewhat of a claim to being the greatest of all time. Even though Stipe has had no fights for the last three and a half years, it'll be over four years by the time these fuckers get in the cage. And the last fight Stipe did have, he got destroyed by Francis Ngannou. Easy pickings. So then he can walk off into such a go and say, I was the best ever. Beating Cyril Gon and Stipe Miocic in this current heavyweight climate where there are so many more dangerous fights doesn't prove that. And if that's what you want, the legacy fight, then fair enough. I think, cool. But relinquish the title because the title should not be on the line for something that is... Uh, one guy who hasn't fought in, what, four years? By the time this fight happens, one of them won't have fought in four, one of them will be four and a half, something like that. How the hell can that represent the best fight in the best? This is Macho Man versus Hulk Hogan, isn't it? When they're old as fuck. It ain't the prime versus the prime. E God. And I, I, this is the saddest thing about it is like, some of his fans are so dumb, they won't be able to see through this. But I say right through it. He knows that he is looking at the absolute pinnacle of heavyweight fighting in Tom Aspinall right now. And he doesn't want to know about it. And actually, I can prove it. This is from an interview he did not long ago. What are the guys that you want to see that, that gets you fucking excited? Tom Aspinall. I think he has the potential to do something really special in the heavyweight division. I think he's going to be hard for the majority of guys to beat. Including you, by the sounds of it. And he fucking knows, man. He knows exactly what's going on here. And the funny thing is, his legacy and resume is all important to John Jones. Well, the last memory we have of John Jones is the one that will last the longest. And it's going to be him avoiding Tom Aspinall to fight a guy who is in nowhere near the th threat of Tom Aspinall and ducking him. Talk about undoing so much of the good work. And look, there are questions over his CV generally and the fact that 99% of the people he fought, he had a massive size advantage over because he was cutting down from heavyweight. The man is a 260 pound heavyweight now. He should never have been at light heavyweight. He had a major advantage over all of those guys. And all of these great names on his CV, well, let's have a look at them. Shogun Hua, middleweight, couldn't get to heavyweight, his life depended on it. Rampage Jackson, good win. Machida, good win. Obviously, Machida went to middleweight as well. Rashad Evans, middleweight. Vito Belfort, middleweight. Chael Sonnen, middleweight. Like... <laughs> The fact that he had a major advantage over so many of these opponents cannot go unnoticed. The real answer is always late heavyweight. That's why he never went to heavyweight. Cain Velasquez was 240 pounds. He didn't want to fucking know about Cain Velasquez. Rightly so, because Kane in his prime, in my opinion, would have been a motherfucker for John Jones to deal with. And yet John Jones, at light heavyweight, was bigger naturally than Cain Velasquez was a heavyweight, both in their primes. And he never stepped up to the plate then. And when he's finally have stepped up, he's going to, I'll take Cyril gone, easy one-dimensional fighter, I'll take old man Stipe and I'll get the fuck out. How is that helping your legacy, really? Only for people who can't see through what you're doing, maybe. Don't get me wrong. He had some really great wins at light heavyweight, clearly. Alexander Gustafsson, Daniel Cormier. Even Daniel Cormier, though. I remember an interview specifically where, I can't be asked to fucking pull up, where they said, why don't you fight my heavyweight? because he's at his best at heavyweight. Why would I do that? That's the, the mind of a John Jones of, I don't want to fight you at your best. Let's drain Daniel Cormier down where his punching power isn't quite as bad and I'll beat him at light heavyweight where he's not as good. That's what he did. We all fucking know this. If you, if you know your history, you know this. And let's not forget the second time he fought Daniel, Daniel Cormier where he popped for steroids. Oh, we shouldn't mention that now, should we? This fucking guy, man. Like, it, it's annoying that this man is viewed as the GOAT when there's so much, and I'm not even talking about the wife beating and all the rest of it. Like, you know, he's a, as a human being, we could be here all fucking day about this guy. But there are so many many questions and he is getting the easy way out and Dana White is laying the red carpet for him. So someone points out, you're retiring after sleep here then. He goes, well, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, yada, yada, yada. He just minces his words, goes around the houses and then he finally says that a win over Tom does nothing for his legacy. Tom Aspinall looks better right now than Stipe Miocic ever fucking has. He is running through people like nothing. And we're talking about beasts like Pavlovich. And he's saying it does nothing for his legacy. Why don't you get all the old heavyweights? If you want to have all these old heavyweight names on your fucking resume so that you can say you beat all these old dudes, get them out of retirement. Why not? Because it doesn't mean anything when they're not in their prime. Exactly. You fucking bullshitting bastard, man. Like, I have respect for the guy's skills. He's an elite martial artist. Could kick my ass. I know that. But don't talk shit.
it. And the funny thing is, if we're talking about who's the GOAT in heavyweight, people saying Stipe Miocic, he got smashed by Francis Ngannou. How can you be the GOAT when that happened to you? And Francis Ngannou then went over to boxing and went to a close decision where he took one of the judges' scorecards against Tyson Fury. Nothing Stipe Miocic has ever done compares to those two facts. But you didn't want to know Francis Ngannou, did you? So there we are then. I'm not saying Jones couldn't beat these guys, but I don't think he believes he would. Because when he had the opportunity, he didn't want to fucking know, did he? So look, all I'm saying is let's cut the fucking crap. The UFC heavyweight division is an absolute shambles and it's caused by this preferential treatment John Jones is getting. And this fight does not represent the best fighting the best. The best is Tom Aspinall. And until John Jones fights Tom Aspinall, you're not the best, mate. Because the question's still there to be answered and Tom wants to answer it and you fucking don't. So therefore, Tom's champ. Simple as that for me. I know a lot of John Jones fans will hate this video. Good luck to you. Enjoy it. And uh, get your comments in below. Let us know what I've got wrong. Don't forget to hit that like button. Stay subscribed to the Pain Game YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.